Good afternoon. Hello, I'm Marco Tempest. Thank you very much for coming to my short presentation. I'm a cyber illusionist. And today I'm going to show you some of the secrets behind creating magic. Cyber illusionist, what does that mean? It means I combine magic and science to create illusions. Arthur C. Clarke said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. That is true and we magicians have known this for over 2000 years. Around 150 BC, Hero of Alexandria described how the temples of ancient Greece were filled with magic. Altars burst into flames. Let's try to do that. Doors mysteriously opened. Musical instruments played as if touched by the gods. Now Hero, a mathematician, also explained how these miracles were accomplished. They were all magic tricks, applications of the little known sciences of hydraulics, pneumatics, and chemistry. But to the temple visitors, this was magic. Now magic as an entertainment form has long separated itself from the gods and superstition, but it has always maintained its relationship with science. Magicians are somewhat the original early adapters of technology. Whenever we hear about a new development in science, whether it's physics, optics, chemistry, or even psychology, we figure out ways to use it in our magic, keeping one step ahead of the public and following Arthur C. Clarke's dictum and disguising science as magic. Magic that we now accept as part of the world of entertainment. Now, magic is a very introverted field. While scientists regularly publish their latest research, we magicians do not like to share our methods and secrets. That's true even amongst peers. But if we look at creative practice as a form of research, or art as a form of R&D for humanity, then how could a cyber illusionist like myself share his research? Now, my own speciality is combining digital technology and magic. And about three years ago, I started an exercise in openness and inclusiveness by reaching out into the open source software community to create new digital tools for magic. Tools that could eventually be shared with other artists to start them off further along in the process and to get them to the poetry faster. I'd like to share with you something that came out of these collaborations. It's a augmented reality projection tracking and mapping system. And I brought it with me, so let's have some, some fun with it. Let me start it up. Wonderful. All right. Now, my creative process always starts with a, with a blank canvas, which is equally frightening and equally exciting. Frightening because of the endless possibilities and exciting for the same reasons. But once I commit my first stroke, the adventure begins. Forgot the floor, sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Hey. Over here. Ah, no, this way. Okay, he got the hang of it. <laughs>
let's try this. Thank you. So, in the spirit of a truly open source magician, I want to give you a sneak peek on uh, how the system actually works. Beh uh, in front of me is a small projector. Mounted on the projector is a high-speed camera. And the camera has an infrared passband filter attached to it which enables the camera to see infrared tracking markers which are embedded in the corners of this canvas. Magnetic cookie from the micro kitchen. <laughs> um, I have a remote control to go through a playlist system. I'm tracking the position of the canvas about 80 to 90 times every second. And I have this thing which is the peripheral illumination which is very cool. So I have a virtual follow spot which illuminates me but does not interfere with the video image. I also have a, a drawing system, a, a 2D particle system, which can do sprites and 2D box physics. There's a 3D mo model loader. There's like various things. So the tool is very uh, extensible and very easy to use for different types of productions. It can be used for projecting onto masks, pieces of scenery, buildings, and such. It's all created in a, in a tool which is called Open Frameworks. It's a C++ library for people who love to play with, uh, with uh, multimedia and new media. Thank you. It may be worth saying something at this point about the nature of magic. What is magic and why do magic tricks fool us? Now, magicians are often thought of as being masters of sleight of hand. The quickness of the hand deceives the eye. But that is not true. Magic does not depend on deceiving the eye. It depends on deceiving the brain. The tricks of magicians are not designed to fool the eye. The eye observes whatever is put in front of it. It's the brain that translates the scene into information. And the brain loves to look for patterns in the environment. The brain recognizes elements and assumes that the things he sees now are exactly the same as the things it has seen before. Now we magicians take advantage of the brain's lazy thinking because in a magic trick, nothing is ever as it seems. Magicians carefully design their tricks so everything about them seems familiar. The props seem ordinary, the magician's actions above suspicion, even the words we use seem straightforward and unambiguous. But this veneer of ordinariness covers many deceptions. So the eye sees everything, but the brain is being fooled. Now, let me show you a card trick and to make sure that I don't use any sleight of hand. I'm going to use some very big cards and this is something we can all kind of play along together and if you already know the outcome, play along anyway. So I prepared five virtual playing cards. I want you all to remember one of these five cards. Remember the suit, 
and remember the value. And make up your mind now, okay? Don't forget your card. We're gonna mix up the card through some magical touch screen technology. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna remove one of the cards. Um, how about this one? This one. Now, if I was right, then your card is now gone. Yeah? Did that work? Well, don't worry about it. Mine actually disappeared too. <laughs> All right. Um, I'd like to show you another card trick. I brought something with me. I, I'm fascinated with card tricks. And uh, there's always this dual reality that there's what kind of goes on for you guys out there. And then there's what goes on in the, in the mind of a cyber illusionist if he does something as simple as a, as a trick with playing cards. So I uh, rigged up this contraption, which uh, hopefully will give you a glimpse. Distant ready acquiring link can talk to, which will give you a glimpse into the mind of a, of a techno magician when he does something as simple as a trick with playing cards. Now, I'm not sure I have enough light. Is this all the light we had in the rehearsal or is there another level of light? Let's see. Otherwise, I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment. Um, to speed things up, so I have a deck of cards. I'm going to select a card. Let's. Uh, Take one from the middle, just like this. And uh, to make sure, this is perfect, thank you. And to make sure that we recognize it when we see it again, uh, I'm going to mark it on the front of the card, just like this. All right. I'm going to put the card somewhere in the deck, just like this. And uh, give the cards a quick cut, just like this. All right, now for those of you who don't play cards, a deck of cards is made up of four different suits. And uh, let's see if that works. No. That ain't right. You know what? I'm going to start this up again. <laughs> Terribly sorry about that. Wicked. Um, while this starts up, this is also created in Open Frameworks. <laughs> and uh, I'm purposely using a super cheap camera on this, which is a, a PlayStation 3 i toy, like a, a $30 camera, because um, I have quite a few very enthusiastic fans, which I love to kind of recreate the kind of things I do, and, and using a, an inexpensive camera makes it much more possible for them to do such Just a thing. Just ready acquiring link. All right, let's see. Okay, so for those of you who don't play cards, a deck of cards is made of five, four different suits. There's hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades. Watching magic is an active pursuit of what is false and what is true. Performing magic is always about these multiple layers of reality combining. Now, each of the four suits corresponds to one of the four seasons. There's spring, summer, fall, and winter. My favorite season is winter. Oh, mine too. Like magic, winter involves visual wonder, drastic change, and a delicate balance between its physical state. In each of the four suits, let's give this a fair cut, is a total of 13 cards. Each card representing a phase in the 13 lunar cycles. Which is very interesting. Over here we have uh, low tide, and then over here we have high tide, and then in the middle we have the moon. <laughs> There's two colors in a deck of cards. There's the color red and the color black. And they represent the constant changes from day to night. In a complete deck of cards, there's a total of 52 cards. 
They represent the 52 weeks of a calendar. Let's try this. One more cut. Three, six, five. The values of all the cards are added. The result is 365. Okay, it's 364 plus the chokers, 365. <laughs> Which is the exact amount of days between our birthdays. Um, and uh, what else could I say? Okay, let's get rid of this. Now, so the cards are somewhat uh, an ancient calendar. And with this calendar, I've traveled around the world, entertaining boys and girls, men and women, husbands and wives, kings and queens, and sometimes Service. Now these guys can be real hecklers, watch. Wake up. Whoa! Are you ready? Ready! Let me see what you got. Presenting my candlestick! Hey, hey, watch out. <laughs> but today I'm performing for a different kind of audience. Today I'm performing for you. Let's put this here. Sometimes people ask me, hey Marco, to do magic, can you just work from 9 to 5? Of course not. I work like everybody at Google. <laughs> okay, 24-7 might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but it does take a lot of time to create magic. Now some people will say, hey magic, that's the work of some supernatural evil forces. Okay, no matter how this looks, to this, I just say, no, no. Okay, in Swiss German, it's nine, nine. It's really not that intense, but I have to warn you, if you ever play with somebody who's so good with cards, don't play for money. Because even if you receive a decent hand, you'll be prepared. And that leaves me with the last and most important card of all. Let's see. This is without a question the real thing. Sign card detected. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, this again uses a lot of fancy tracking and stuff. So if any of you after the presentation are interested to see a little bit behind the screens, I have all the debug screens open and uh, you're welcome to come up here and check out how the, how the tracking works and all the occlusion and making things disappear on the table and such. Uh, I'd like to show you one last thing. It's a, it's a piece of software I've been working on uh, which synchronizes videos across multiple screens of mobile devices. Um, it's free, it's available at the App Store, unfortunately, as of today, only on iOS, but we're working super hard <laughs> making this work on, uh, on Android devices. I brought these three iPods with me to show you how it works, and I'm going to use them to tell you a little bit about my favorite subject, which is deception. Start this up. Okay. So... <laughs> Yeah, that's how we treat them. <laughs> Deception. One of my favorite magicians is Carl Germain. He had this wonderful trick where a rose bush would bloom right in front of your eyes. But it was his production of a butterfly that was the most beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, the creation of life. When asked about deception, he said this. Magic is the only honest profession. A magician promises to deceive you, 
And he does. I like to think of myself as an honest magician. I use a lot of tricks, which means that sometimes I have to lie to you. I feel bad about that. <laughs> but people lie every day. Hey, where are you? Uh, I'm stuck in traffic. I'll be there soon. We've all done it. I'll be ready in just a minute, darling. It's just what I've always wanted. You were great! Deception. It's a fundamental part of life. Now, polls show that men tell twice as many lies as women. Assuming the woman they ask told the truth. We deceive to gain advantage and to hide our weaknesses. The Chinese general Shun Tzu said that all war was based on deception. Oscar Wilde said the same thing of romance. Some people deceive for money. Let's play a game. Three cards, three chances. One five will get you ten, ten will get you twenty. Now, where's the lady? Where is the queen? This one? <laughs> Sorry, you lose. <laughs> I didn't deceive you. You deceived yourself. Self-deception. That's when we convince ourselves that a lie is a truth. Now, sometimes it's hard to tell the two apart. Compulsive gamblers are experts in self-deception. They believe they can win. They forget the times they lose. The brain is very good at forgetting. Bad experiences are quickly forgotten. Bad experiences quickly disappear. Which is why in this vast and lonely cosmos, we are so wonderfully optimistic. Our self-deception becomes a positive illusion. Why movies are able to take us onto extraordinary adventures. Why we believe Romeo when he says he loves Juliet, and why single notes of music, when played together, become a sonata and conjure up meaning. That's Claire de Lune. Its composer Claude Debussy said that art was the greatest deception of all. Art is a deception that creates real emotions, a lie that creates the truth. And when you give yourself over to that deception, it becomes magic. Thank you. We already have reached the end of my short presentation. Thank you very much for coming. If you have any questions, we have two microphones which are open right now. I'm glad to answer most of the things you might want to ask. <laughs> also, if you're interested in some of the technology, I have to stuff up on stage and uh, we can play with it as well. Thank you. Any questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.